my uh, first meeting with CAV. Uh, it wasn't 1999 when we started to work to um, build the foundation for the Widener University PMC African American Alumni Association. It was back in the early 80s and I believe that Dr. Maul was still the president. But I got a call that I should be on the second floor of Old Main to present a lecture to a nurse, nursing group. And I was told that Cav would meet me on the second floor. And the name was Dr. Cabin. So I came from my um, workplace in Pittsburgh, came to the second floor, and I was looking around. I didn't see the classroom, but I did see a person. And we walked towards each other, walked past each other, and then we walked again towards each other. And I said to this person, I'm looking for a white man. And he looked at me and said, I'm looking for a black man who graduated in 1960. And we both laughed because Dr. Cavan was the person. And he showed me into the um, classroom where I presented my lecture on occupational and environmental health and safety. My second meeting with CAV that I remembered was several times I would mention to him Boys High School Alumni Association. When I became the uh, fourth president of the Alumni Association that was founded in 1999, and I looked over in the audience in Queens at the Holiday Inn, there was CAV and Gwyn. They had traveled all the way from Chester to be with me at this uh, special program, and I was very grateful. My last time with Cav was when he had passed. I had missed the uh, funeral uh, ceremony because of the traffic on the New Jersey Turnpike. And I got there about two hours later, and I went looking for the crypt. And I said, this would be typical of Cab because he would have liked the scene around his crypt. On the left of it, there was a small girl, and she was doing hopscotch on the grave markers. And I just described it to Cav, and I just remembered the man, the man who gave so much to Widener University, who will always be remembered by his family, who would always be remembered by his student and Widener University. And finally, Cav was part of that group, I call them foot soldiers, in the movement to bring total integration to the U.S. He was part of a group that was embedded in various institutions that worked to make sure that equal opportunity, not only for employees, but for students, took place. Gwen, uh, your two sons, your grandsons, Cav will be remembered. And I know that I share with you the joy of remembering him. And we'll all meet again soon. Thank you. Yeah, the, the many activities that he had with the various um, organizations in uh, uh, Chester is, is a good example, where he actually provided the outreach to Widener, which actually brought more African American students into the um, uh, the, the scholarships program. In fact, you might even say that his activities made the, um, uh, the overall 
Widener University expand more to, to provide more scholarships and financial aid to uh, students. I think it set the example because during my time, uh, PMC was, you know, uh, keep in mind that um, the first African American students that came to PMC came from outside of the Chester area. In fact, Charlie Lowry came from uh, Florida to the prep school, by the way. Uh, Lou Horner came from Connecticut. Uh, Keith Bodden came from Brooklyn, New York. Uh, it, it was kind of ironic. You, you would think that the first African-American students would come from Chester. And I remember one of the first assignments that I, uh, Dr. Maul gave me was to go to Chester High School to talk to the students. And they were surprised that uh, they were African-Americans at uh, PMC. PMC was looked at th that place on the hill, but obviously it was the hill belonged to Chester and it belonged to all the students. When I went to uh, uh, PMC, there was only two other African-Americans beside me. I'm, I'm West Indian um, American. And any movement was always like Charles Laurie and Lou Horner, they were the other African Americans. Students. Uh, students, yes. The only other, uh, th there were groundskeepers that actually I used to work with uh, some of the groundskeepers during the summer. But never saw any black people inside of Old Main, only students, myself, Charlie Laurie, and uh, Lou Horner. So when I saw a black person on the second floor of Old Main, that was highly unusual. And I guess it was my mentality that said, hmm, maybe things haven't changed. Who's this person? But things obviously did change. He was a faculty member. He was a director of a program. And uh, we need to remember that. Uh, during my time at um, Widener, uh, I was the first African-American cadet to graduate and to be commissioned in the Army. Uh, there was a veteran that was here, he was a day student, and he uh, in turn graduated in 1956, and I graduated in 1960, Charles Laurie in 1961, Lou Horner in 1962. And by the way, Lou Horner and Charles Laurie are very well known within the uh, PMC circles. Uh, Charlie Laurie became a veterinarian, a uh, very successful practice, and also a um, uh, professor at uh, East Michigan uh, State. And uh, Lou Horner became a successful businessman, and uh, he, he is still given to students by, uh, in fact, his memoirs were uh, presented. I, I brought them to Widener about um, a month ago, and I think they're in the hands of Dr. Harris now. Uh, I, I think things were changing. The uh, uh, I integration was uh, of, of business, of uh, schools in the north and the south was a way of life. It, it, it wasn't an issue anymore like uh, when we were here in Chester. There are certain areas that uh, cadets weren't allowed to go. Obviously, uh, being a, uh, a cadet of color, I went to those areas because I, you know, I, I, I like the people. And uh, th there were uh, African Americans that lived around the campus, by the way. Uh, we, we used to visit them. Uh, when the campus started to expand, I just assumed that these homes were taken over. Um, the, um, yeah, I, I think it, things had started to change and there were more African Americans on campus. Now that doesn't say that when we were here there were issues. Actually there was only one time that I recall that there was an issue when someone called me the N-word and that was in a, a jest. And every time that I saw that person uh, in our professional life he always apologized. Was there any uh, issues on campus? I, I, I suspect they were, but uh, I think we were too busy uh, studying and too busy doing uh, other things to be concerned. Certainly, uh, when you look back around the uh, Chester community, there were big issues that were being looked at.
And I'm so grateful that uh, Widener has uh, taken the archives of the Chester NACP and made them now a part of the uh, digital files. This is a great thing. And by the way, as the uh, president of the Morris County, New Jersey NACP, I really want to give uh, many thanks to uh, President Harris and uh, the other faculty member that were responsible for bringing the archives of the Chester NACP into Widener University. They need to be kept, they need to be studied, they need to be remembered. There were many uh, different uh, lines. You had the people that were on the street protesting. Uh, you had this, uh, the strategists who were uh, in uh, Congress, uh, like the Black Issues uh, conventions throughout the country. The, um, the, the strategists were the ones that gave what should be done next. But the foot soldiers were within the schools, they were within the industries, uh, the, they were working on a daily basis, not only doing their job, but making sure that the companies, the schools, did the job for uh, integration. And in some ways, the foot soldiers were the ones that brought the calm to the civil rights movement, because many people saw uh, who they were and that there was no turning back. And that's where the, uh, the liaisons between all the communities started to build by the foot soldiers. Yes.